What's up guys? We have an E92 335XI with an N55 in the garage today and it's in for a bunch of service but one of the bigger reasons is it's not currently passing emissions and the reason for that is actually some DTML codes. So the owner came and said that he's got a check engine light, it won't pass emissions, and that the DTML is not working at all. So he also told me that the pump itself was replaced. This is the pump. It sits on the back of the charcoal canister right behind the passenger rear wheel. And um, after replacing it, it did not fix the issue and the car still doesn't pass emissions. So after scanning it, we found a few codes. So we have DTML solenoid valve activation, short circuit to ground. We have leak diagnosis pump, which is just DTML. Uh, short circuit to ground, solenoid valve, activation, line disconnection. And line disconnection literally is not the lines, as a lot of people think. So um, he actually brought it in for me to do a smoke test on it, uh, more than likely because it says line disconnection, although that is not the proper diagnostic for this. Uh, line disconnection is actually talking about electrical lines. And then here we have DTML leak diagnostic or diagnosis pump, activation, line disconnection, so same thing. So these are the codes. I'm not sure the generics. I don't really use them in the garage, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and calculate test plan. And let me go to diagnostic module for tank leaks. It's going to load the test plan, give us some wiring. And um, okay, so since it's not plugged in, it's not going to show me what's going on. But anyways, what it does is it basically just shows you the wiring diagram, tells you that obviously um, smoke tests are not going to solve anything, and then leads you to chase wiring around the car, make sure the plug is plugged in properly, and everything like that. So what I did is I went over to the DTML pump itself, checked the plug, removed the pump, and I was going to go bench test it, but I kept kind of thinking back, maybe I should go look at the plug. So I'll drop a picture of what the plug looked like um, before we took it apart and we'll put that in now. And obviously it was damaged. So this is what we did to fix it. All right. So right back here is where the carbon canister, charcoal canister sits. Uh, it has these three connections that are physical lines. And then this is the plug for, or was the plug for the connector. So when we took it apart, you can see that red and white wire was all bunched up and you know not really making good contact and then i don't know if you guys will be able to see it it looks like somebody did something in here before because the what is this black and white wire looks oxidized so i don't know if uh or maybe a different wire entirely um i don't know if water got in there or what but yeah it's like darker and then this one completely fell apart when we were just simply taking the plug apart not even pulling on the uh wires and then these two we actually properly disconnected so the remedy for this we could just you know cut splice and try to repin it um, what we actually did is find all the parts so here we have the oe plug and then i got the insulators and the original pins you can see them all properly in there and what we're going to do is just splice this back in so normally I like to use the proper colors, but um, we're just going to make it short enough that, you know, you can unravel this and see if you need to. Um, I'm not sure this is ever going to have to be messed with again after we do this repair. So hopefully this is it. This is pretty short and it is under tension. So I wonder if it was just a little bit too short from factory. Uh, from what we looked up online regarding this issue, it seems like a lot of people are actually having these DTML codes pop up for this plug. Um, and it seems to be an issue that people are having to find all of the components to uh, rebuild the plug. So if you have any questions regarding that, just give me a shout. I could probably get you all the components. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do is probably just like splice these in at different lengths, keep it a little bit longer than the stock length. And the only issue between these wires, aside from the color, is uh, we're using SAE gauge, but it's the closest gauge to the metric gauge. Uh, and it shouldn't cause any issues regarding the circuit. So we're going to repair it um, and then let you guys know how the repair is. And we should be good to go with that.
All right, excuse the heat blaring, but this is what we did. We just crimped some, uh, you know, butt connectors, some shrink tube fittings on them. So we're gonna heat these heat shrinks up and then I'm gonna double insulate them. I have uh, some heat shrink on them, but we're gonna put over and then put it into place. So the order of this is pin number one is gonna be your brown and white. Number two is gonna be your black and white. Number three is gonna be your black and yellow. And number four is red and white. Now, I think it was um, this black and white one. I was saying earlier that it looked like it had some corrosion. It actually just has some silver wiring. It's like a dark black uh, silver wiring in it. So it's not oxidized. Uh, the rest of these are copper. This one's just different for some reason. Um, but yeah, that's what we're looking at. So let me finish this up. Um, and then we'll even throw some electrical tape on it and it'll look great. All right, here's those butt connectors after they're heat shrinked. Now we're just gonna bring the actual shrink tubing up, get that on, and then we're gonna cover this whole thing in electrical tape. You can see we left it a little long, uh, as mentioned before, just so it doesn't have that tension on it. I think the tension is what kind of ruined it in the first place. All right, so now we have the heat shrink on the wiring and Looks pretty dang good. So now we're going to electrical tape this whole thing and get it all back together. And there it is all finished up. We got the little chassis mount that goes right there, taped into the loom, and then all insulated with some electrical tape. So we have obviously the butt connectors, the shrink wrap, and then the electrical tape. Um, and that's how it looks. So now we just gotta reassemble. So this is it all back together. You can see how it kind of plugs in and almost like chafes up against this hose. So I think that's got a lot to do with it. Um, and obviously those wires were corroded. So the extra length actually adds a drip loop since this is behind the driver's side uh, rear wheel, um, even with the fender liner, some moisture might get back here. So the drip loop definitely helps keep those terminals and um, the plug itself clean. So I think this should be a great remedy for this issue.